This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. For a free 10-day unlimited trial, visit lynda.com slash macvoices. And by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, to stay up to date on all the Mac Voices news. Subscribe from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Welcome to the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time the Mac Jury is going to examine buying an iPhone. Now, you might think that the horses left the barn because a lot of people pre-ordered, but we came to realize that there are plenty of people that are going to be buying an iPhone on the first day. There are even more that are going to be buying it between now and whenever. And with all the changes that happened when the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus came out, there really wasn't a lot of time to examine this. The pre-order people did a lot of research, but it never really made it out there. So we hope to give you some answers or at least help you ask the right questions as we get into this. Actually, this Mac jury was the, the idea of our first guest, Mr. Josh Centers. Josh, great to have you as always. Thanks for having me back, Chuck. Yeah, this this was your idea or your fault, depending on how you look at it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're yeah. this one on Josh one way or another. <laughs> well, that's kind of my job at Tidbits, really. <laughs> is, what, is it to cause trouble? <laughs> take the, that and take the blame. <laughs> okay. All right. And of course, someone's got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> the other voice you just heard, of course, is Mr. Adam Angst. Adam, great to see you as always. Nice to be here, Jack. Th thank you for, for stepping up and volunteering for this uh, this duty. So, guys, you know, if, w w seriously, as I said before, when the iPhone 6S came out, uh, or it was announced, and, and pre-orders were announced, what, two or three days later, we really all had to kind of assess things. But suddenly yeah. then Apple provided a new option of their own to buy a phone from them. The carriers seemed to be juggling or have a lot of their plans in 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 transition. And so a lot of us made a decision very quickly based on what we could get together. Now we've had a little time to step back, consider things, try to do a little more research. So I'm not going to ask you what you did or you know whether you would change it, but what are some questions that we need to help folks ask about themselves? And Adam, I'm, I'm going to start you off because you brought up a thing that really doesn't apply to me that much, and that is that you typically hand your phones down. So Getting a new phone yeah. with each time doesn't necessarily work for you. Well, and, and and I think that's I mean what we realized was you know because Apple changed the whole system um, and really the carriers did as well to move away from contracts where the phone is tied tightly to it to your contract. What you do depends a whole lot on how you interact with old phones. So, for instance, um, three people in our family, me, Tanya, and Tristan. And um, and our approach is that Tanya and I alternate getting a new phone. So we always have one of the latest phones. And in the past, that worked out really well. So the two-year contract would be up for one of us, and that person would get a new phone. And the other person would have you know another year left on theirs. And, and then Tristan would always get the third one down. And, and, and actually, again, somewhat because of what we do, we actually now have like four and five still around if we ever needed to test something or more realistically what happens is is that you know some friend or relative you know breaks their phone and needs needs a loaner and like oh look here's an iPhone for us want to borrow it <laughs> so you know so we never get rid of them um, or we never we never trade them in officially anyway and so when a, you know a lot of that kind of came up we we kept we thinking about it, like but but we actually have use for these phones I and mean, we get a, we get at least three years out of each phone, and so you know so trading them in after a year, which is what sort of the idea is behind Apple's plan, for instance, wouldn't do anything for us, and and you know and just because it's now possible with Apple, I don't see that as changing what we're going to do because. You know, really, we're not much as much as we're tech involved. We, we we don't frankly care that much to each of us to have the latest and greatest at all times. And I think it's imp an important point here that dollars aren't necessarily the absolute bottom line. I mean, they're abs absolutely a consideration, but there are other factors such as you know wanting slash needing the, the phones on the first day of availability or or pretty soon thereafter. 
Adam, as your situation dictates family. Josh, what are some other considerations that you can think of or that maybe apply to you? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm kind of torn in this whole thing because, you know, on one hand, uh, we're kind of like Adam's family where we, uh, you know, we don't necessarily pa pass down devices, but we do, you know, I do keep old devices for testing and also for backups. You know, uh, my wife has a friend out in California who needed a new iPhone, at least temporarily, and so we sent him uh, her old 4S. So, uh, you know, that wasn't exactly handing down, but I mean, it, it was the same basic concept. It was good to have that phone around. On the other hand, I kind of wish I was on this um, annual upgrade cycle, um, well, especially this year, because with the 6S, you have this new force touch capability. Oh, I'm sorry, 3D touch. It's, it's force touch on the Apple Watch, 3D touch on the uh, iPhone's 6S. So now, but now you have this whole new interface option that I, I'm unable to cover because I still have a year left on my iPhone 6. And so uh, I'm going to have to rely on others to help me fill in those gaps until I do get uh, my hands on a 6S, which my wife's due for an upgrade in spring or so. So, I, you know, right now I'm kind of leaning toward that annual upgrade, some kind of annual upgrade plan, because then I will always have that latest device, uh, you know, in case they do make major changes like that, I can still cover those. But then uh, I can have, you know, I might just buy old iPod Touches or something, you know, to keep around as test devices or old iPads, something like that, and just, you know, have a drawer full of those as, uh, for testing. You know, one of the things that, that I think Josh may have run into, I don't know quite how it all started for him, for, for, for Tanya and for me, because we got in at the very beginning, actually not with the original iPhone, I forget, I think it was the 3G was our first one. Um, because the original one just frankly didn't do anything enough that we needed. Um, but because we always started at the beginning, we came around on the upgrade cycle exactly right every time. And so, I mean, Josh could actually do the same thing with his wife in terms of, you know, trading off who gets the newest one, or he always gets the newest one because it's his job, and she gets the next hand-me-down, which who knows, maybe they not, might not go over well. But, but the point being that there's a lot of ways of doing this. I mean, people also, I don't know, maybe people don't realize this, that we use AT&T, but what we do when we get a new iPhone every September is we take all three of our iPhones down to the AT&T store and say, get this working. Actually, four iPhones, because it's, you know, Tristan has his old one and his new one, and then Ty and I each have a new one. Um, there's, you know, so there's three lines, four iPhones, sometimes the SIMs have changed sizes, the plan has always changed in some form or fashion, and we just stand there for, you know, for, you know, 15 minutes to half an hour working through all the details, making sure all the phones work, you know, on, because it's like sometimes the person who can upgrade isn't the person who's getting the new phone and, you know, say Tristan's stuff needs to get moved over and all that. Um, so we make sure that, you know, from the AT&T standpoint, that everything is set before we leave. And we don't want to try to do that on, on the phone or online because it just doesn't work as well. I mean, you really want to be standing there with someone who can say, oh, that SIM doesn't work and pull out a new one out of the drawer. It's some definite value to having a local, whether it's AT&T, Verizon, Apple Store, whatever. No question about it. From what AT&T has told me about my plan, though, it, I, and I'm on the one where at least in theory, theory, next September, whenever a new iPhone comes out, I will be available or have access to a new one. I can still, though, buy that contract out. And the theory seems to be that I think I, I'm on a 20-month plan, but I'm eligible in 12. So I would have to pay eight more, eight more months of payment, but then the phone is mine if I want it. So you're on the AT&T next... Correct. 18 or 12 or, I mean, those numbers for AT&T Next are, the, the number goes with when you can get a new one, not how many money you're going to be paid for, so it's massively confusing. No, I, th I, th um, I think it's the other way around, actually. I think it's it's the AT&T 20 plan, but you're available in, tw uh, eligible, excuse me, in 12. Maybe that's what it, as I said, it's, yeah, it was yeah. one of those things where, I mean, when we wrote this article, Josh and I, I mean, how long did we spend on that article, Josh? Over a week. We spent over a week on it. I mean, it was, it was nuts. I mean, Josh wrote the first draft. I went into it and like, oh my God, this is even more complicated and just kept throwing more and more content into it. And then I, we passed it back, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth um, until the, the whole thing was almost unrecognizable uh, from where it had started because there was just so much information. But I think the real, the thing that I actually came to, I think, think realize, although I would have to actually again run the, revisit it and all run the numbers to be certain of this, is that the 
big advantage of all of these installment plans is that they're actually decent deals. That it used to be, or, or I mean, let's say you buy a Mac from Apple. Apple does allow this. You can buy a Mac on an installment plan from Apple. But you will pay for it. Just like if you lease a car, you will pay for that privilege. So the amount you would end up paying is higher than the amount if you just paid up front. And the installment plans, that doesn't seem to be true. That the, the Apple one seems a little bit more expensive, but that's only because they require you to buy the $129 Apple Care Plus with it. And so as a result, it does, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's basically the, the, uh, the vaunted 0% financing where you're trying, trying to figure out what that means. You know, so <laughs> that means there's no financing, right? You know, so, so basically you just put, you just take your cost of the phone, cut it into however many slots you needed, whether it's 24 for Apple and many of the other others or, you know, AT&T's various different numbers. And and so it's not actually a problem that way. So I think that people, if they do wish to trade in their phones, those make a lot of sense. If they don't, if they don't want, if you don't want to trade in your phone, as you say, you can buy it out. I don't think there's a penalty to it, but I don't think there's a win either. Um, it's just the zero percent financing. You know, you didn't pay your $750 up front. You'll just pay it, you know, you'll just get to it over time. I'd like to go back just a little bit, just in case uh, any of the viewers are confused. Uh, so essentially what, what we're talking about here is, you know, here in the United States, for, for the longest time, uh, you would pay a, a subsidized price for a phone, like for an iPhone that started at 199 An iPhone is actually about $649, but you don't pay that. Your carrier pays most of that, and you, you make up for it in expensive service fees. Well, um, starting with T-Mobile, they're moving more to the European model. You pay the full price for the phone but you pay less for the service. And the reason they're doing this is because they got sick and tired of Apple charging so much for the phones, even though, you know, to the consumer, it was the same price as a cheap Android phone would be in many cases. So you essentially have three options here now. You can spend the full price for the phone, uh, the full $649 uh, for the 16 gigabyte iPhone 6S. You can do um, a straight installment plan, like, uh, like what Verizon offers. That's over 24 months you pay uh, about $27 a month, starting at $27 a month. And it's zero, I think on all the phones. All 0%. They're all 0% financing. Yeah. You just split it up, that 649 or however much it is, uh, between 24 payments. And, and that's what you're on the hook for. You're not on the hook for the service, but you're on the hook for the phone. Um, now, if you buy the phone out right nowadays, um, now there's still a contract options, which makes things confusing, but this is sort of how where everything's shifting to. Um, and, and so if you buy the phone out right, you can technically switch any time. Then you have stuff like the Apple plan, uh, stuff like uh, T-Mobile's uh, T Jump on Demand, where you're paying an installment, but you have an option to upgrade early. And that, that will extend your obligation, your contractual obligation, but... You do get to switch, uh, switch, uh, trade it, but you have to trade in your phone. But you get the new one every year. So those are basically your three options: pay all up front, pay in installments, or pay uh, pay an installment with an option to upgrade every year. Adam, I want to go back to, to what you said because I'm not sure that there isn't a win if you buy your phone out, and it depends on how you define win. One of the wins is you get to keep the phone, so that might sure. allow you to do. It's certainly cheaper than buying another iPhone. If you've just already got one and assuming it works and all that, but then that's the same as just paying full price to start. Just spreads out the payments. Yeah, it's it spreads out the payments, but okay, yeah, it spreads yeah. out the payments. I mean, it's the same amount of money. I mean, so so I think this is actually an important point that the iPhone really went from. I mean, the the low end ones was one ninety nine, three two ninety nine, and three ninety nine. That was those were the prices, and there was four hundred and fifty dollars of subsidy that was dis that's appeared. And that somehow got made up for in your contract, and you never knew how. But you kind of thought the iPhones cost about two, three hundred dollars. Whereas now, suddenly, you, you, if you're going to buy an iPhone outright, it's six forty nine, seven forty nine, and eight forty nine, and that's a lot more money. I mean, that that feels like a big deal. I mean, that's that's a, that's a MacBook Air for goodness sakes. That's you know, that's a high end iPad, um, and so. I think that the and there's no, because there's no penalty for splitting the payments out. It more comes down to just sort of how you think about money. I mean, if you have the money up front and don't want to fuss with the payments and extra extra payments to an extra you know possibly to Apple if it's a separate provider, all those kinds of things. 
pay it up front. You know, there's no no harm in that. And and similarly, if you know, seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred and fifty dollars is just more than you can really quite stomach at any one time. You know, but you're really okay with thirty five or forty dollars a month, then 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 split it out. You know, the, the, it is important to say that there's no no difference. And if you just buy out the phone early on the other one, there's no difference. You just pay a little bit more sooner than if you had let it let it let it expire. It's twenty four months. I, I think we could spl- I think we could break this out into three kinds of iPhone buyers, and and offer an option for each one. The the first uh, kind of iPhone buyer is. Um, I don't want to say cheapskate because these things aren't cheap, but you know the <laughs> the person who who actually cares about money and cares about budgets and that sort of thing and doesn't always need the latest, newest, shiniest thing. If you're that person, um, you know you'll probably want to buy the phone outright or split it up, or you know, with just the regular payment plan, and then keep the phone for as long as possible because that's how you will save money. Because you know after you've paid off the device. The uh, the service is relatively cheap, and and you know we looked at all the different uh, you know services you have now. Like Verizon is mostly what my brain focuses on because that's what we have, and Verizon is way cheaper now, assuming you own the phone. So you know if you do that and you keep that phone instead of two years, because it's always been the case that the only thing that made sense was to upgrade your phone every two years, because otherwise you're paying all the extra money for nothing. Now it makes sense to keep your, that phone for four years, and and that's where how you'll get the most money out of it. Um, just like a car, really. Um, the second kind of person is is the flexible, is someone who wants a lot of flexibility and wants to be able to jump between carriers. If that's you, your best bet, go to Apple, uh, you know, either go on the upgrade plan or buy the phone out, an unlocked phone from Apple, take it to whichever carrier you want, and, you know, you don't, you have no contract now. You, you own the phone or you have a deal with Apple, and uh, you can do as you wish. The, the third kind of person is the person who always wants the latest and greatest thing. And if that's you, then uh, something like T-Mobile's uh, Jump Program or Sprint's iPhone Forever Program, which is basically the same thing, or uh, Apple's uh, Apple, whatever they call their the, iPhone the, upgrade the, program. The, yes, the iPhone upgrade program. Uh, you know, wh- the, one of those options. If if you have to have the latest and shiniest, that's the op. You know, those are the best things for you. So I mean, yeah, it kind of sucks that it seems like you're paying more for an iPhone now, but you have so many more options now. You know, uh, for you know, to tailor to your own. The In theory, the cost of ownership should be the same. More you or less. When we actually, so we actually did compare for both of us. I have AT and T. Josh has has Verizon, and we tried to compare apples to apples between the new plans with our contract free and the old contract plans. And as far as we could tell, it's not too different. That it might be a little cheaper now, but not significantly once you take the cost of the phone into account. Mm-hmm. Which you have to assume is makes sense. I mean, the carriers aren't just dropping prices because it because they're happy about this. They want to make money. So right. if they can tweak all their stuff around and end up charging you exactly the same amount, they're happy. One thing, <laughs> uh, there's so many there's so many points here. I guess I, I'm I'm looking forward though to the idea that that to make sure that I'm not locked in, that I can I can kind of get out. I can st- I can buy out my contract. Then I've got the phone in my hot little hand, and I can I can. I can hand it off to someone else. I can sell it myself. I can sell it to Gazelle or Amazon mm-hmm. or, or whomever. And again, I, I have to wonder what that market is going to be like at that point. How competitive will the the the, the That's iPhone an interesting market... question. Yeah. So so one of the things to be clear with these like the iPhone upgrade program or, or T Mobile's jump on demand is that you have to trade in your phone. So it has to be in good condition, it has to be working, all of those kinds of things. Um and for them to even take it, but it is it is also the case that um, if you just buy out the phone, then you can then you can attempt to sell it. Um, you know, as a Gazelle is one of the one of the big resellers that that, that will buy a used iPhone, and uh, and you know and presumably they I never I've never heard of anyone selling these phones, but they Gazelle must buy them and get them to someone else to resell. So I don't know quite what market it is that that buys those. Right. But they, they do exist out there, and, and it's a really interesting question because they have to assume that T-Mobile and Apple and all these other companies who are going to be accepting these traded-in phones are going to be shoving them off on the resale market as well. And so will that be changing what you can get on your own? Probably. 
Yeah. You know? and, and last year, I know at the store, because I last year I went to the AT&T store to buy a phone, and they were offering right there to trade your phone in. and But, but they were giving quite a bit less than Gazelle. But these people are happily hand, happily handing over the phones, and you know it's like, do you realize that you could get another fifty, sixty, seventy dollars? Uh, yeah, but I'm here and I'll get it done, which is really a fascinating thing that there is a convenience factor to just being able to right. go to Verizon or AT and T. <laughs> well, and, uh, and get even it with done. Gazelle, I was, you know, I personally, I kind of think Gazelle is a bad deal. Uh, it just depends on your temperament, though, because uh, you know when I. I can't. I think it was my iPhone four. I, I sold off, and Gazelle didn't really get, want to give me like a hundred, two hundred dollars for it, something like that. I got a lot more money from it from Craigslist. I didn't have to pay any transaction fee because it's Craigslist. It took me about a month to sell it, but I got the price I was after. Um, actually, a little less because I made a deal. The woman, the woman lived about an hour away, and I told her I will drop uh, seventy five dollars off the price if you drive to my town to do the deal. And so uh, I live in the middle of nowhere, so that was a great deal for me. And uh, she saved a little money, and you know everyone turned out happy, and I got more money than from Gazelle. But yeah, I mean, you know, well, and Apple offers that program too. So I mean, it all just depends on you know how much you want to hustle and how much conven- how much you want to pay for convenience. It's it's the, it's yeah, it's exactly the converse of you pays to shop around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Josh, you just you gave up seventy five bucks for convenience. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, but I still I still got paid more than Gazelle would have paid me. Yeah. Well, and, and of course. I don't know when you were selling it. I mean, there are a lot of different factors here that you're going to have to look at. And, and obviously, right. you're going to want to do the research. I just think it's going to be interesting that up to this point, Gazelle was your first best option. Then the carriers started to get into the game. Now the carriers are into the game uh, in a bigger way. And now Apple is into the game because same thing with Apple. You have to trade your phone in. But well, Apple's offered um, a trade-in program for at least a year, haven't they? They, I think last year they started it where you could trade in your old phone and get uh, Apple Store credit for it. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. There you go. Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. Get a full, free, 10-day trial at lynda.com slash macvoices. I could spend pretty much every information spot for lynda.com telling you about the great new courses they're adding because they're always adding great new courses. In-depth courses. Courses for tech, business, personal development, video production, photography, and much more. Courses like problem solving for web professionals, which is interesting even if you're not a web professional. Teamwork fundamentals, because everyone has to work in teams sooner or later. Exploring Photoshop, Mastering Curves, just one of so many great Photoshop titles. Foundations of IT Security, Core Concepts, for those wanting to get into IT security. I can think of a couple companies who have been in the news recently who could really have used this. Media training, a course I wish every single person who ever worked a trade show booth would watch, rather than having to go look for someone with media training. Or designing icons for the web, because an eye-catching icon can make all the difference in the perception and success of a product. Those are just a few of the very latest titles in lynda.com's ever-growing library of great training titles that can teach you something about just about anything. You can watch what you want, when you want. And with lynda.com's iOS app, you can watch where you want by downloading courses to your iPhone or iPad. No internet connection necessary. You should really think about joining lynda.com and learning something new. Right now, by visiting lynda.com slash macvoices, You can give it a try for a full 10 days of unlimited viewing, unlimited topics, free. Just sign up and start watching. Any course, any subject, new or old, it's yours for the viewing. At the end of 10 days, you will realize just how much you've come to rely on lynda.com as a place to go not only to learn new skills, but also to improve existing talents. That's lynda.com slash macvoices for your 10 free days of learning. Do it right now and learn something new today. Thanks to lynda.com for their support of Mac Voices. Apple, the nearest Apple store is an hour from here, and I actually haven't been to it ever. So um, the, I've, been to, I've been to further away ones, but not the, not the closest one. And so a lot of these programs that Apple does are really only available in the stores, and you kind of have to hear about it from someone. So if you don't, if you don't do that, you won't know about it. Um, and so I think I imagine a lot of people did that. Now, I, I suspect that that's actually a, a broader point is, is that there's a lot of people out there with iPhones, 
you know, hundreds of millions. And so, you know, there's room for all of these different models with their different prices and different levels of convenience and different levels of awareness. So, you know, Apple's iPhone upgrade program, I mean, one of the interesting things there was um, Josh and I discovered there's a little bit of fine print, which is if you buy um, a phone from the Apple iPhone upgrade program, you have to register it with one of the four national carriers, so-called national carriers, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint. And so if you want to use one of the MVNOs, the sort of the next, next level down providers that, that resell the networks of the bigger ones, you can't do it that way. You got to pay full price. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not, it's not the end of the world, but you know, it ends up being the same in the end, but you're going to have to pay up your 650 or 750 or 850 to start. And then you can, and then you can take it to cricket or consumer cellular. We have to, we still have to look into these. We got kind of hammered by iOS nine and whatnot, but, uh, but people were, people were adamant that we should look into some of these second level providers because they have some really good deals. Please, this article isn't complicated enough. Can you add some more to it? <laughs> we need more variables. <laughs> I forget. Wasn't it like 35K or something? It was nuts. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was, it was just, a full tid issue of tidbits in one article. <laughs> and an already big week. Because I, I, I'm a little distressed. I'm sitting here thinking about this for the first time. Are you when you sign up for the next plan? Is that does that include service or uh, service considerations, what? or are we just talking about the phone? Why? Well, Yes. Plus. So if you, so obviously if you're if you're on the AT and T Next plan, um, you and I'm hesitating here because I don't know if this goes in both directions. the The fee that you're going to pay AT and T includes an a, an access a device access fee or device connection fee. The terminology changes a little bit here and there, and that fee is forty bucks a month. However, if you have a no, no annual contract plan or AT&T Next, that drops by $15 or $25 depending on the particular device. And so that's where you actually end up saving the money. That's, the, that's that money that really is where they were taking, taking um, their subsidy fees out. So now what I don't know after when you said that, I, was, I had this, this moment of panic is, if you're paying AT&T for the phone via AT&T Next, can you go to, say, Cricket, which resells the AT&T network? And I don't know the answer to that. Can you, in other words, can you have AT&T Next separate from an AT&T plan? And I somehow doubt it, but I don't know that. <laughs> but, but Adam, I guess I, I, hadn't, I wasn't going in that direction, but it's, it's an interesting question. I guess I'm thinking, I'm saying, okay, at the end of 12 months, I, I have eight months to buy out. Am I buying out just my eight months on my iPhone, or am I having to buy out eight months of iPhone and service to be able no, to get that? No, just the iPhone. Okay, that's that's good. Just the iPhone, because the the service is month to month. There's no contract with the service as long as you move away from your previous plan. Which I so do. your previous plan was a contract plan, and you have to make sure you're off of that appropriately. This is partly, you know, I mean. Don't get me wrong, I, I've spent way too many hours looking at these carrier websites when Josh and I were writing this article. Um, it's just so much easier to go into the damn store and talk to someone. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but that's assuming you get somebody competent and, and that knows the plans I've actually themselves. had really good luck with AT&T and Ithaca. Um, and it's a different person every time, so it's not like there's you know, there, there must be significant turnover in this business, but... I, you know, every time I've found them to be, you know, you know, entirely, entirely capable and competent. And usually, like the manager has been around even longer, so that that's never been an issue. And if you're coming in with a phone, I mean, they've never tried to upsell me or switch me to another phone or anything like that. You know, I'm just like, hi, I've got these phones. I need to change my accounts. You know, and they're they're just they're all over it. And actually, you can usually get them to tell you interesting stuff like how many phones they got from Apple of which types and all that. So uh, you know, so it's, it's, you can get some some interesting uh, interesting numbers. Like when Apple introduced the gold iPhone, they really didn't get hardly any. So yeah. now, on the other hand, if you're like me and on Verizon, now I, I've done business with AT and T, and my experience was like Adams. <laughs> they were usually very friendly, very professional. Verizon, on the other hand, is like walking into a frat house. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's something you have to understand, especially your bow. Wait, wait, be careful, Josh. I mean, you know, we, we let's not do slander here. <laughs> 
I'm just saying my experience. It, well, here's the deal. There, there is a business reason for this. If and, and you need to know this if you're an iPhone person because the uh, now this may be changing now with the with the new regime. But the way it's been in the past is that the the salespeople a lot of, a lot of the cell phone makers will give salespeople a kickback for selling their phones, like a Samsung. Spiff. Right. It's called a spiff. Okay, a spiff. So so the uh, you know Microsoft uh, Nokia. Uh, Samsung, whoever, you know, hands them a little money. Hey, thanks for selling our phone. Who's who's listening for you? Apple, <laughs> they're not doing that. They're like, no, iPhone sells itself. You know, go elsewhere. So the salesmen, uh, you know, this is their living. So they get a little uh, testy about that. And so every time I walk into a Verizon store, I don't know if this is true everywhere, but it's at least true in all the ones I've ever been to in, in this area. Uh, they're like, wait, well, hey, what do you got an iPhone for? That that thing's a piece of crap. You know, like, wh why are you such a bad person with an iPhone? Like, here, get, here's a Samsung phone. Here's a real man's phone right here. Why don't you, why don't you get a real man's phone? <laughs> you know, and just just crap like that. Like, it's it's like dealing with a used car salesman. You so a real man's phone. Yeah. <laughs> I've had people say crap like this. It's got camouflage. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hunting phone. <laughs> it's got a blade in it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, maybe it'll take down a deer from thirty yards. Yeah. <laughs> So, seventy pound draw weight, <laughs> but the uh, you know. So my advice is this: is, this is one thing I do like about Verizon now. Verizon has made their new plans. Once you wrap your head around them, are super simple. They're they're, they're super simple to, to understand. Um, so you can do everything from the computer or through Apple. You don't really need any of those uh, those guys help with anything. So uh, you know, but here's how their plans work now: you pay X amount per data, and that's shared between however many lines you have. And then you pay 20 bucks for a smartphone uh, for access. And that's it. So for my wife and I, we got three gigs of data, that's 45 bucks. And then 20 bucks for each smartphone, 45, 20, and 20, that's 85 bucks a month. Dead simple. Now, here's the complication. I do want to explain this for Verizon people. And I actually had uh, uh, a couple of Verizon employees independently explain this to me. You can switch to the new Verizon plans, even if you're under contract. Um, you'll still be under your contract, but you can still switch to these new plans here here's the deal with them though I, any line on contract uh and, and this may come up if you're like my wife and i she her contract's up in march mine's up in september so we're gonna have to deal with this before too long so the deal is um if you switch to the new verizon plan if your line is on contract instead of 20 you pay 40 so and it's just that simple and once you're off the contract it drops from 40 to 20 and that's it and, and that's the way it works. So, for instance, uh, so we pay like 125 something like that now total. So when uh, her contract is up in March, and she's going to need a new phone because our toddler uh, beats the crap out of hers. Uh, so th then she'll switch to that new Verizon plan. So we'll pay 45 then 20 for for her service, plus however we get her phone. Um, uh, we're kind of leaning toward the iPhone upgrade program for her, and then I'll pay forty for mine until September. And then in September, my my price, my access fee for my line will drop to twenty bucks, and then add on however I buy my phone. Then, so if you're on Verizon, that's how that works. So it's just, it's real simple: twenty bucks a line, forty bucks a line if you're on contract, and then then however much the date is. During the research, and, and I know you haven't completed it, so it's may be very clear on <laughs> it's that. Never complete. <laughs> yeah, well, um, Adam, you were talking about Cricket and some of the some of the quote unquote off brand cell carriers. Um, anything that you've seen there that that jumps out? Because I don't know. My my concern would be unless you just always stay home in your town and they have really good coverage there. If oh, if I'm going no. somewhere else, so these are these are what are called MVNOs or Mobile Virtual Network Operators. And the, the key letter in that acronym is virtual. So they don't have their own networks. So they'll resell T-Mobile or Sprint or at and I'm not sure there's any Verizon ones. There's a big list on Wikipedia somewhere. I'm not sure there were any Verizon ones. Um, but the, Josh can look for that while we're <laughs> um, But so if it's T-Mobile or Sprint, it's the same problem as if you work with T-Mobile or Sprint, which is they have weak networks. So when I look at the T-Mobile at coverage map, there's a big blob of gray, meaning no service um, without a roaming partner, over my house. It's like right there. Um, and uh, admittedly, they have Wi-Fi calling as a Sprint, so if I was in the house, I could still you know, make calls without, without a problem. But so, however, there's two that have come up, Cricket uh, Wireless, and I believe it's called Consumer Cellular. 
And both of those resell the AT&T network. And the AT&T network, while not as good as the Verizon network overall in the United States, is still much better than T-Mobile and Sprint. And so if, um, if there, there are gotchas there, and that's why I said I have to go and read, read the fine print. So, for instance, AT&T, let's say you go to Canada for the weekend because you live in the northeast and the northwest, um, you know, where it's easy to pop up to a major Canadian city. Um, you can buy a service from AT&T. It's expensive and stupid, but you can do it so that your phone will work in Canada. With, I think it's Cricket, there is no international plan at all. So that's fine. That means you have to go get a SIM card in that other country to be able to use your phone, which is nice to be able to do. I mean, this is not, it's not a bad thing, but it, it is just one less option that you have. Um, T-Mobile, the international roaming options, for instance, are really good. They just work. You get international roaming everywhere you go, you know, 120 some countries. So, you know, if you were um, traveling overseas a lot, it would probably be worthwhile to just go with T-Mobile if you could get away with it in your, your primary area as well. Um, but, uh, but so, yeah, they, it looked to me like you could probably save, you know, 10 to $20 a month on the MVNOs that I looked at once you actually got to a comparable plan. Um, Another one that I looked at, I can't remember which one this was, maybe it wasn't one of those two. For instance, you couldn't have three lines. It was one that was aimed at uh, retired folks. And so they were perfectly happy to give you two, but they were not assuming families. And so, you know, I was like, oh, okay, that's a weird gotcha, but so be it. You know, I mean, might be a problem for some people, might not be for others. So, you know, so what you want to do is, is you know, you know, changes it. It's also kind of fun with that, like that, I forget which one it was. They was aimed at, aimed at retired folks. Um, everything about their site was aimed at retired folks. And um, was this jitterbug? You would, yeah, it gave it a very specific feel. And I was tremendously amused by this because long, long ago, before I had an iPhone, um, I got, uh, I got really inexpensive analog cell phone service through uh, Virgin Mobile. Which I swear was run for teenage girls. <laughs> I, I had that too. Like and, I thought you called customer mean, service, you'd hear. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> I swear they answered the phone with "What's up?" Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I did. I was like, you know, you're making me feel old, and I just said hello. You know. <laughs> I felt old, and I was like 23, 24 when I was on you know, Virgin Mobile. They actually that, that had a service uh, back in the day where if you're on an awkward date, you could text a number, and that would that would send a fake phone call to your phone. So you could be like, oh, sorry, I got to go. I got an emergency here. I'll, I'll catch you later, you know. Or, yeah. <laughs> that, that's product differentiation right there. Yeah. Right? I like that. I like that. So, so I mean, you just you just never know, I guess, is what I'm saying. And, and – I mean, it's, it's an interesting question because, I mean, I do think, you know, like we use AT&T historically because we started with AT&T and because we do this every other, every other year kind of thing, it's almost impossible for us to get out of it. We always have one phone that's under contract. And so once that goes away in next September, um, you know, we'll be totally happy to go somewhere else if need be. You know, we're happy enough with the AT&T network, um, but, you know, if, if Cricket or Consumer Cellular, whoever it is, can, can offer us $30 a month less, so be it. You know, I mean, I've been happy enough with the AT&T customer service, but I'm not going to pay $30 a month for it. Especially because most of the reason I've been happy with it is when they do something stupid and I have to call them to get to take it off the, off the bill, so... So let's try to, to to make some sense of this. And I don't think that we have... No, it can't be done. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think we have any answers. I think we have a lot of questions that maybe you should ask as you go and consider buying a new phone. Do you want... And, and, and join in with me, guys. Do do you want to hand it down? Um, do you feel the need for a new, a new iPhone as it comes out every year? Family plans, which you two have some experience with, I have no experience with. Well, are you trying to save the most money? You know, that, that, I mean, one of the things that comes up with all of these contract plans is it gets a whole lot easier to switch carriers. I, I will tell you one thing right now. We haven't talked about Sprint much, 
But if you're on, if you want a family plan, stay far away from Sprint. Do not do. It took us so long to figure out the, their, their individual plans are super simple. It's sixty five bucks, then like fifteen bucks for an iPhone. Easy, something like that. Very simple. Their family plans. I thought we were gonna have to call Stephen Hawking and get a slide rule out. I mean, there's <laughs> well because the individual Sprint plan is unlimited, right? So. The, the Sprint um, family plan, though, you can't have an unlimited data family plan. You have to pick a tier of data. So it's a whole, totally different game. And then they still offer contracts in addition to all the more modern options. And all, yeah. all the variables change depending on which one you go with. Do you go on a contract or not the contract? Oh, it's so, yeah, just, just stay away from Sprint. The, uh, I, when, when I was when I was writing writing the summary of for, for Sprint, I was like, Sprint is just weird, and <laughs> and one of the commenters commenters you know pulled that out. I was like, yes, they are. <laughs> so um, okay, so approach Sprint with some skepticism if you have, if you're looking for a family plan. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm just trying to think what what else. I had one more. T-Mobile was also a little confusing when you got into the family plans. Um, they had these weird kind of drop down tiers. Um, but we also kind of rounded up who, you know, which ones were the most expensive at different levels. One thing you'll discover is, is they, they all change their amounts of data that they sell you in the various tiers. So you can't really compare apples and apples very easily. Um, so, you know, for instance, Tanya, Tristan and I get by just fine with two gigabytes of data shared among three of us. Um, and so, whereas some people would just be horrified at having that little data, one one guy said he was using thirty gig of data on his phone every month. And I was like, "Wow, what are you doing with it, dude?" Yeah. Um, you so, know, someone that lives on the road, I guess, and apparently watches movies nonstop. <laughs> the truck driver. Another thing to consider too, and and this is where Adam, you started to out part of the discussion with this. Figure out what kind of insurance, if any, is included in the plan, because you may want to put Apple Care Plus in, and that's fine. Apple Apple requires it in their plan, yeah. but you got to figure out, okay, that's money you're going to have to to shell out. Or I, now this was not well, of course, I didn't go to the store, but I'm not sure if AT and T still offers me the option. And I don't know about Verizon or T-Mobile or any of the others if they have their own insurance plans. Um, you know, generally, I consider the the carriers uh, insurance plans to be a rip off because you'll pay 10 to 15 bucks a month per phone um, for, for that plan. Now, the, the nice thing is, is that uh, they cover theft. So if your phone gets stolen, they'll give you a new one. Here's the problem, though. I've used these programs before, so I know about this. They'll hand you the junkiest, crappiest phone they can find in a drawer somewhere like I. I had, a, I had a droid on Verizon, and I had a little problem with it. And so I traded it in, and then they gave me one that was even worse. They had, like, the buttons were purple instead of white, and the screen was all loose and janky. And so, you know, I just generally don't don't go with those plans. I I think typically um, uh, Square Trade or um, Apple Care is a better deal. Um, I don't know how they those stack up now. Uh, Apple Care is a little not as good of a deal as it used to be because it's a lot more expensive now. Yeah, basically one thing that people may not realize is the Apple Care prices used to be $99 um, for at least a low end phone and $79 for the incident um, that you know if you hurt it and you needed it fixed or whatever. And with the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus that goes up to $129 for Apple Care Plus and $99 for the incident. So you're talking, you know, $230 for if you're going to if you're going to break the phone once. Which that's kind of a lot. Um, I mean, I I sort of understand why people do it, but it also, you know, you might look back at your history. We've we've never gotten Apple Care Plus on a phone. Um, and we've only broken one phone um, badly when Tristan was much, much smaller, and we put a phone in a, you know, a bicycle carrier, and the screen came out cracked. Like, what? It's padded in there. And Tristan had kept a lucky rock in there. He was six <laughs> at the time or something. So eight, maybe. You know, like, ah! But, um, mm. but so, you know, so in, in a lot of these cases, basically self-insuring. You know, if I mean, how many, how many, you know, hundred and twenty nine dollar, ninety nine, hundred twenty nine dollar insurance uh, payments do you have to make before it's actually not worth it because you didn't break a phone in the two in the time you had it? So I, I think it just depends on the, on the individual. Um, you know, for my, I will never buy my wife another iPhone without Apple Care because <laughs> uh, she broke. Yeah, her well. 
Yeah, she broke her 5C, and I even got a, a free screen replacement for it. But it was still a nightmare to put in, and the phone's still a little wonky after it. So, yeah, fr- from here on, yeah, Apple Apple Care all the way. Well, here, here's the thing. You know, women's uh, – and we've talked about this before with the Apple Watch. Women's uh, pants don't usually have pockets. And then on top of that, she, you know, she spends more time with the, our toddler than I do. So, of course, he grabs her phone and does things with it. And that's, and that's how it got broken. So, uh, you know, for her, it only makes sense uh, to always have the insurance. You know, I think in the long run, they'll probably, if not save us money, at least save us frustration. It's... This might just be a depends good, on who you are and how hard you are on phones. Yeah, this might be a good time to recommend that if if you think you're going to break your phone, get a get one of those super shock absorbent cases. I mean, there's some, she had one. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> she had one. Okay. Well, then See, but, never mind. I, I'll tell you part of the problem with those cases. Well, a they don't always work, but b uh, a lot of times they're very persnickety um, about which kinds of lightning cables they will accept. A lot of them have such tight tolerances. They only accept the Apple cables, which is fine if you want to pay 20 bucks for every cable you get. But most sane people don't want to do that. And so what happens when you have a cable that doesn't work with the case? Well, you take the case off, and then here comes the two-year-old, and there goes your phone. Um, so that's, just, that's one of those variables to be aware of. You know, I think if, you're going to, if you have to worry about your phone getting broken, just get the insurance either way. <laughs> a case helps, but you probably want the in, some kind of insurance. Josh, you seem stressed. <laughs> well, I do have a toddler. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm having flashbacks to replacing an iPhone 5C screen, and that yeah, you really don't want to go inside anything no. anything from the iPhone 5 on up. Oh. No. I mean, I replaced I, re- I replaced the battery to my 5, I guess it was, and it was a nightmare. I mean, I I, I succeeded, but oh man, it was not good. And then Josh did the the screen to the iPhone 5C. And and that's coming from the iPhone. F- I mean, I did the battery for my iPhone four, Dude. and that was trivial. I mean, it was like t- took me five minutes. It was easy, no problems. Okay, not a problem. Mm-hmm. And so I thought the five would be easy too. And and now my rule is, yeah, not so much. Um, <laughs> don't don't. You don't want to go there. I've, I've built several PCs. I've, I've been soldering and playing with electronics since I was, you know, since I could walk. Um, yeah, no, I don't want to work on another iPhone. <laughs> Too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Too finicky, guys. I, I you know I appreciate it. I want to make sure I put a link in the uh, in the show notes to the article that, that you all wrote that was a tidbit issue into unto itself. Um, we didn't mean it, really. We didn't. It just got more and more complicated. Well, and you know, and it, that that may be. I hope there's a lesson here for some folks that you know you got to look at some of this stuff. You you almost have to write it down, walk away, think about it for a day or two, and then go back. I, I wish there was some kind of master chart we could put together, but it changes so fast. And we, we talk a lot about that, or I do anyway. Um, at some point, it's just not possible. And part of it is, is that there's so many variables that you can't take into account. Um, so, for instance, I was talking about the international stuff. Sprint, just weird when it comes to international. So they've got these different plans. There's two, two of them. There's two different plans you can get. They're both free. I don't know why they have plans for them if they're free. But you have to enable them. You can't just have them. And that'll get you some stuff in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, and then another one will get you some stuff in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico at about eight other countries. And it's a very weird mix of eight, you know. So it's got the U.K. and Germany, but nothing else in Europe, if I remember right. And it was just maddening. And so that's the kind of stuff where we're like, what do you – you have a column for international. What do you put? Just weird? I, I, I will offer my advice. If, if you want just the simplest thing – and, and money isn't – you're not looking for the best value. You'll drive yourself crazy if you're looking for the best value. But if you just want the simplest thing, you just, you just say, guys, I, I just want a simple plan. I don't want to have to do math. Just go to Verizon. Seriously, Verizon's plans are the simplest. They're not the cheapest, but they have the best network here in the they're United States. They're not actually – and Josh says they're not the cheapest, but in fact, they came out as the cheapest in one or two of our cases. Yeah, they I were mean, not bad. They're not a bad value. Yeah. You know, um, I mean – got to put it, up to the frat boys though. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. Don't go in the store <laughs> – if you have an Apple store anywhere nearby, uh, mine's two hours away. I would happily drive the two hours to not go to the Verizon store. Go down there, sign up for the iPhone upgrade program. Uh, you know, get, get your credit check, whatever, whatever test they must do to see if you're worthy of it. And they do uh, drug testing for that now. Possibly, <laughs> possibly. That may be why it has to be done in person. Um, hopefully next year, we, we, I won't have to drive down there. But anyway, go down, go to the Apple store, and be like. 
hook hook me up with the, with the eternal iPhone program and uh, just put Verizon on there and figure out how much data your family needs and then you're done you, you just just pay lots of money per month you'll have the latest iPhone forever pretty good service uh, you won't get too much of a headache figuring things out you know easiest way to go easiest way to go the, ex the opinions expressed by the panel of this Mac jury are not necessarily mine or that of the shows is <laughs> it's uh, wow. Yeah, I, I don't think this is a hung jury. I think this is just a very confused jury. <laughs> well, there's no, verdict. there's no singular verdict we can we can offer here. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there isn't. Move yeah, into the yeah. woods, get a ham radio. You know, don't don't yeah. mess with this nonsense. No. It's just different for everybody. And you know, as I gave again to going back to the international thing, Verizon was pretty okay. If I remember, right, if you went to, to Canada and Mexico, going to other countries, not so much. Well, you know, it got confusing again. Well, so this is why. Know, so, so, this is why I recommend going to Apple for the iPhone upgrade uh, uh, plan program, whatever they call it. I recommend going to Apple because you get an unlocked phone. And so if you do go to another country, just buy a SIM there, put that in, uh, try not to drop it. They're very, very tiny now. And, uh, and, and that should work, and that should be a, probably a better deal for you if you spend much time overseas. You know, that's, that's a good thing to wrap up with, uh, the, the locked versus unlocked phones. I know I've heard Dave Hamilton say a couple times that, you know, if you, if you will go – in his case, in my case, if you go to AT&T, after a few months of getting your phone, you've made your payments, you appear to be responsible, you know, they will unlock your phone for you uh, or, or allow it to be unlocked. You don't, you don't even have to go there. You can just go on their website. That, you're right. It takes, takes two minutes. That's I was right. surprised. I did it with mine just as a you know, proof of contact, actually. Yeah. So that's another consideration is locked versus unlocked. And that goes to the mobile. That goes to, or excuse me, to the international getting a SIM to put in, yeah, it's... So this actually raises a question that we don't know the answer to, um, I guess, because no one's gotten in a 6S or 6S Plus yet, which is that given the fact that you're not signing up for, assuming that you're not signing up for a contract plan because it's increasingly hard to do so, are all the phones unlocked? Don't know. Well, I mean, you're on the hook to whoever for the phone separate from anything else, so there's no reason for them to lock the phone or to in any way get in your, you know, not want to unlock it for you. So, you know, and, and again, we assume that the iPhone 6S that Tanya has coming on Friday is, uh, it, it was unlocked because we paid full price for it rather than going for the installment plan because we don't have an Apple store nearby. Um, but I don't actually know that. Um, you know, I just, it's one of those good questions that we won't know until they start arriving, but, uh, Tell you what, you know, hopefully the whole, will disappear yeah, when she gets her phone go to t-mobile buy a sim from them plug it in see what it does or, or better yet, go to verizon because that's uh instead of gsm is cdma so see if it'll work on uh, that network i think i don't think that will work because there are still multiple iphone hardware models and which one you get, still, they still speak different radios um you know and, and if you get the different models so I, you know, it might work on parts of the, the Verizon network, but not all of it, for instance. Yeah, that's something I'm still confused on. Well, and I know they had a ch the, the chip in it uh, was supposed to do both, but then I heard something. Um, and this is this is uh, speculation because I don't know exactly what the facts are here. But I've heard that even though they have a chip that can do all networks, I've heard that once it uh, it locks onto one, it's locked onto, and it can't change. I don't know if that'll be different now. It, you'd think it would just work with whatever now, but yeah, we'll have to find out for sure when people start getting the hardware. As I said, I, the I they definitely chance. still, if you go to the iPhone 6S specs page, you will still see that, or there's still a page somewhere on Apple's site that tells you all the different models that they have. Um, you know, that there's different models that you buy for different countries and different, different um, carriers. So there's absolutely different hardware still out there. Hmm. I, I think I hear a series of tidbits articles coming. <laughs> <laughs> it may carry us through to the iPhone what 7. What have I done? Yeah. The international stuff is completely impossible as well because you've just got to work on almost complete hearsay, you know, that, about what, what works and what doesn't. It's just impossible to even, even you know, like find someone who knows and all this stuff. So, But regardless, I do think that, I mean, for the most part, if you just go to Apple – um, or your local store, um, or you know, you, you type in your zip code or your area for uh, one of the carrier websites, you'll get the right thing. I mean, you know, the, I don't think there's any real question. The only time it would be a problem is if you were very intentionally buying, you know, an AT&T phone from Apple, but you definitely wanted to switch to Verizon in the next year. 
you know, you knew that was going to happen for one reason or another, that's when you should go talk to someone who really knows, probably at an Apple store or one of the carrier stores, although they won't necessarily be helpful. I don't know, guys. I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk about it. I, again, I don't know that we reached any conclusions, but but hopefully we gave folks something, some things to think about and some some options. Uh, and you know, if you need if you need a, a Japanese teenage girl phone, you know where to go. Japan. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That keeps us out of trouble. <laughs> Josh, thanks thanks for suggesting this. This has been fun and educational, I think. Yeah. I think all our heads hurt now. Yeah, mine does. Adam, uh, thanks. Thank you. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had more to say, but yeah. you know, I mean, here's perhaps here's the takeaway. It could be simpler. Apple could do it all, but will they ever? Do, do, do. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> They could buy all of these carriers with petty cash. Yeah. But would they want to be in that business? No. Guys, thanks so much for the time. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices, uh, the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. Uh, again, we hope that you make, got something out of this, that uh, that you are successful in buying a phone, because we all have iPhones and we like them. It's just a little strange how we got there. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard, by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.